I have people every week coming to my Breakthrough Experience, one of my signature programs, which I've done 1,109 times. And I have people come up and they say, well, this person was, uh, you know, was abusive and I, I hate them and they're bad people and they label them. Sure. And then I go, and I go, so what specific trait, action or inaction do you perceive this individual displaying or demonstrating that you have labeled, um, you know, you despise most? Well, they did this and this. I go, okay. Let's go to a moment where and when you perceive yourself displaying or demonstrating that same behavior um, in your life. Well, I would never do that. I pride myself in it. No, no. We only judge things on the outside in a resentful format when it reminds us of something that we feel ashamed of in our own life and we're judging. It's a reflection. And I've done that on 100,000 people, so I know that's got meaning. So he said, so let's stop because to, to, to look at them and not look at yourself. Uh, is to now dissociate from your own cause. And now you're disempowering yourself because you're now exaggerating yourself and literally giving away what you're perceiving to them and they're the cause of your craziness. And if you're too proud to admit what you see in them is inside you, you're disowning that part. That disowned part is not a fulfillment. You've made an emptiness out of yourself. The ancient Greeks called it the, the kenoma. So I go in and make them hold them accountable until the quantity and quality of what they perceive is owned. Mm -hmm. And it's really quite eye-opening and humbling to make them go, whoa, they calm down. And they, instead of looking down on them this way, it they starts leveling the playing field. Then I go, well, have you ever had a situation in life that you thought was terrible? And then a day, a week, a month, a year, or five years later, you look back and go, thank God that occurred. Or thank the universe for that. Yeah. Well, why have the wisdom of the ages with the aging process and we can ask the question and become aware of it now? We don't have to wait for years to get the insight from this. So go to the moment where and when you perceive this individual displaying or demonstrating that specific trait, action or inaction that you labeled and you resented most. And at that moment and from that moment till now, how did it serve you? You've never taken the time to look. You just assume there's drawbacks. You're conscious of the downsides, unconscious of the upsides. As a result of it, your sympathetic nervous system is playing out. You're going into a survival response. You're subjectively biasing it automatically because it's a predator and you're trying to withdraw from it and it's running you and it's occupying space and time in your mind and you're not running you. So how did it serve you? And they go, it didn't. I go, look again. I don't want you to make anything up. I don't want you to exaggerate. I just want you to look past your bias and let's take a look again. And I make them look and they, they find it. There's always an upside. Because everything has neither of those until you narrowed it down with your bias and your judgment in the first place. It's just an event. It's a quantum event until you label it supportive or challenging based on artificial label. So what's the upside? When they find the upside, I make them go and dig that upside until the quantity of the upside and quality of the upside is equal to the quantity and quality of what they thought the downside was. And it levels that field. And then they stop and they go, they find out that the thing that's, been useful in their life, this thing actually catalyzed. They find out the people they met, the things and decisions were impacted by that. And all of a sudden they're grateful for that. They never thought they could be grateful for that. They're not grateful for that. Then I ask them, now go to the moment when where you displayed that, that it brought you up and reminded you of. And let's find out how it served those people. And then they dissolve their shame. And then let's go to a moment where and when you perceive the same individual doing exactly the opposite to break the label that they're always that way or mostly that way. And then you'll be aware that you've blocked those out because of subjective biases. And then now the big one, go to the moment where and when they did it, they displayed and demonstrated that trait. And in that moment, where are you? When are you? What's the content? What's the context? At that moment, who are they demonstrating it to? And at that moment, because of the pair of contrast in perception, you can't perceive something without a contrast. One of the William Wunsch basic laws of psychology. So who is demonstrating the opposite to you at that moment for you to be able to see it? And I make them aware that the opposite was in play, but they blocked it out and are unconscious of where the opposite was at that moment. And when they see that, they brought to tears. They just go, whoa, I never saw that. This was actually a pair of opposites. The thing that was challenging you, you were cocky and it was bringing you back into equilibrium where you were authentic. And the thing that was now supporting you was lifting you up. And now you're back into authenticity. It's almost like the universe is assisting you in being authentic. And now if all of a sudden they had done the opposite of what they did, the way you fantasized 
to live, how they, you wish they would have responded, because you wouldn't have judged them if you didn't have a fantasy how they should have been. What would have been the drawback if they had done that? Because as long as you're holding on to a fantasy, you're going to be depressed about your reality because you're comparing it to a fantasy, which isn't what's happened. Sure. And that's something you're comparing it to. So they find the drawbacks of that, and they've just come to tears and tears of gratitude because they realize there's nothing there. It was an illusion, and there was a hidden order in that apparent chaos. And because they were bias in their perception they didn't see it and they didn't know how to ask the right questions to become revelatory to it and when you do you're inspired by the realization that that was actually an exact thing that was needed in your your journey and that is a form of spiritual inspiration that is not creed-based not faith-based not belief-based but just a scientific ritual if you will where your the the objective questions and the science of the linear sequence of asking them is holding you accountable, which is a balance sheet of the mind, to see what's there and have full consciousness, mindfulness, instead of halffulness and, and moral constraints that box you in and keep you in a box of reverberating blame and shame games. So I find that that allows an individual to see the magnificence instead of their insignificance.